Welcome, solar friends. Uh, my name is Fred Craybill, and you're on the 2021 ASES National Solar Tour. It will be held on October 2 and 3, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, this location here is the 98 solar panels on Thomas Boulevard. Um, again, my name is Fred Craybill. I'm a, a solar enthusiast and climate activist. I'd like to introduce my cameraman. His name is Greg Kaczynski, and he is uh, Hi. he is uh, uh, lives in Squirrel Hill, and he has a solar array on his house too, yep. three kilowatts. Um, okay, so uh, we are a very interesting community here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The section's called Point Breeze. Uh, over a hundred years ago, the captains of the fossil fuel industry and the coal industry and the steel industry used to roam these streets. And uh, it was very important in the growth of the fossil fuel industry. Uh, George Westinghouse had his lab and mansion just down the street. Uh, two blocks the other way was the home of Henry Clay Frick, and it's still a museum for him to this day. And of course, Andrew Carnegie uh, roamed this area many years ago. And now, in the area of Point Breeze, we have 30 to 40 solar homes in this area. So we're now very involved in the shift to the clean energy future. So um, let me just give you a little bit of, uh, uh, we're gonna take a tour around the whole property and see all three solar arrays. Uh, I'll start with the first one here on the roof. That is a 34 panel solar array. They are silicon panels made in the USA. Each one can generate a maximum of 235 watts for a total output of 7.82 kilowatts. Each solar panel up there has an inverter behind it to convert the DC electricity from the solar panel to AC. And those, those, that type of inverter is actually, uh, it's very small, it's called a micro-inverter. So, I just want to share with you a little bit about the primary reason that I decided to go solar. For me, uh, I'm a, a, a citizen who's very concerned about climate change. When we listen to the scientists and uh, hear what they have to say, they're talking about the threat of too much CO2 in the atmosphere leading to more severe drought, heat waves, forest fires, rain and flash flooding events. We're going to see more melting of glaciers, more warming of oceans that will lead to more severe hurricanes. We're going to see sea level rise be a serious threat and also dying of coral reefs. So these are just a few of the many issues related to climate change. I encourage people to get involved in this issue, learn what the scientists are saying, and most of all, go out and vote and maybe even put a sign in your front yard like I have here. The time for, the time is now for climate action. Here we are on the west side of the property with our newest solar installation installed in November of 2020. These are three pole mounts. Each pole mount has 24 panels. And let's go back and take a little bit of a closer look. Each of these panels can generate 375 watts of electricity for a total output from all three of 8.88 kilowatts. Uh, there are EC solar panels and uh, four, uh, 12 of them are on one string. So eight panels on this one go to the middle one and line up with four more on one string. And similar with uh, the far one, eight panels come to the middle uh, middle pole mount and line up with the other four panels there. So two strings uh, with 12 panels each and uh, that's the gist of it. Uh, I'll, uh, the beauty of coming to visit me in the solar tour is you can actually reach out and touch solar panels here. Most of the solar homes you go to on the tour are going to be on the roof. You can't get close to them. Here at 98 Panels on Thomas Boulevard, you can actually reach out and touch your solar panels. So let's go back here a little bit and take a little bit closer look at the middle pole now. So 
So uh, there is an uh, underground trench going from this pole mount, the front one, to this one, and then an underground trench going from the far back one to the middle one. They unite here and, and uh, are wired into this box, and from there, all that power from all these pole mounts goes through a trench that follows along this path right here between the gardens. The trench there goes around the bend and meets over there on the far wall where the, uh, DC, where the DC inverter is, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. But uh, when thinking about this, my solar tour here, it was a little bit, uh, you know, it kind of bums me out that we only have 98 solar panels. I mean, why can't we have like 100, you know? So I wanted to find a way to get 100 solar panels. So uh, let me dig in my pocket here and see if we can get to 100. Okay, I got two calculators here. One of them has a solar panel there and one of them has a solar panel right there. And now we have 100 panels on Thomas Boulevard. Hi, here we are at the third system at Thomas Boulevard Group. And again, you can reach out, touch the solar panels. You can hug them if you like. And uh, so this was the middle array that we had installed here at Thomas Boulevard. This array uh, has 40 solar panels, 20 on this side, 20 on this side, and there's an inverter that goes with each one. We'll take a look at the inverter in just a second. These solar panels are Solar World solar panels made in the USA. Each one generates um, 275 watts of power and uh, for a total output of 11 kilowatts. Uh, so this, um, we're going to come through the uh, entryway here and take a look at the inverters. To your left there is inverter number one, just around that, uh, right by those plants there. And then over here, uh, we're going to take a look at inverter number two. This is a Sunny Boy inverter, and it has a display screen here that can show the power output, and you can uh, hit on the inverter here, and it will walk you through different screens. It's very, uh, very user-friendly. Sunny Boy, made by SMA. We're going to go around the bend here, and we're going to take a look at the solar revenue meter. This is the meter that uh, records the electricity that we're generating. And as you can see, uh, the sun went a little bit behind the clouds and we're not really cranking. If the sun comes out in full, this thing is going to start spinning like wild. But that's the solar revenue meter. And the last thing we're going to take a look at here is Here's a great company in the Pittsburgh area, EAS Solar. I just want to give a little shout out to Ian Smith, who is the solar consultant at EIS. Also, Hal Seville, who is the commercial sales consultant at EIS. Joe Morinville, owner. Marty Bovey, who is the foreman that did this most recent job, and this one here too. And also, Joe Fucci in the office. Those are the guys, great team from EIS Solar. Here we are at the side of the house, and um, as part of my efforts to address climate change, we're going to do a couple signs here of famous people with famous quotes about uh, getting people thinking about climate change. Here we have one of the first, the first sign that we have at the side of the house from Obama talking about climate change is a fact and how we need to consider future generations and uh, addressing this issue to make the planet habitable for future generations. Now let's walk over here to the side of the house. And I want to show you uh, some of the electrical devices related to the system. Uh, specifically, this is the inverter uh, that manages the three pole mounts that we looked at earlier. This is an 8.88, uh, well, that's an 8.88 uh, kilowatt system. And uh, just a little correction, those are 370, 370 watt panels. And this is a diverter, inverter that manages all of them. 
This inverter takes the DC electricity supplied by all those, those three pole mounts and it converts it to AC electricity. So that's DC coming from over there to AC over here. Another way to remember that is AC, DC. I'm on the highway to the circuit breaker panel. Highway to the circuit breaker panel, AC, DC. Got it? Got it. Okay, Greg and I just took a little jaunt around the front of the house here. We were on the other side and now we're on the driveway side. To take a look at the uh, electric company's meter. This meter right here is from Duquesne Light, our electric utility. It records our power consumption. And then uh, ignore this meter here because it's for the uh, garage and carriage house. This doesn't play into our uh, tour. So this is a meter for the main house. And it, uh, behind this meter in the basement, connected to the circuit breaker panel, are all three solar arrays providing power to the house. But now the question some of you may have is, what happens to the electricity when uh, we are generating more electricity than we can actually consume in the house? And that oftentimes happens during the day. Well, what the electricity does is it wants to follow the path of least resistance. It wants to escape somewhere. And where it escapes is through the main service line from the power company up to the top of the pole, out that line, and it goes back to the grid, and it goes to the house next door. That is the essence of net metering. And net metering is a process whereby the homeowner can return power to the electric company, get credit for that at the meter, and take that power back at night for free. So the principle is this. I send Duquesne Light one kilowatt hour of electricity during the day to help power a home next door and they send that back to me for free at night when I'm not generating electricity. Just about 20 feet away from that Duquesne light meter is the revenue meter for the solar uh, array. This is for the roof solar array that we started with at the beginning and it measures all the electricity produced by our roof mount array. And as you can see, it's a little cloudy right now, just a second, and that dial is running a little slow it's not moving very much, but if that sun comes out from behind those clouds, this thing is just going to take off and start cranking. Our final segment of the tour here, we're going to review uh, some of the reasons why people might want to go solar. First of all, as you can see here, we have an electric car, a Tesla, and uh, Let's talk a little bit about how easy it is to recharge an uh, electric car that, and you have solar panels that, uh, run, that uh, help to run the car. So, in recharging your car, you take your cord, plug it in to the outlet, and uh, that's usually at night before you're going to bed. You go to sleep for eight hours. You wake up in the morning and your car is fully charged and ready to go. This is so much easier than going to a gas station. And usually it's in the morning when you go to the gas station, you're, you're late for work and you realize you're low on gas. You go in there, you got to spend five minutes pumping the gas. Gas smells, you might get it on your hand, you have to wash it off. Uh, all those days are over with, with electric cars. You can charge your car at home at night and be ready to go in the morning. And the other benefit of it is you can charge it with your own electricity. Years ago when I had a gas car, my gasoline came from halfway around the world. It came from Saudi Arabia, and they would drill for the oil in Saudi Arabia, extract it out of the ground, load it onto tankers, ship it halfway around the world to a refinery in the U.S., refine the oil, and then from there it had to be shipped again to my local gas station. That system was so fraught with difficulties and geopolitical issues and we actually have seen wars that uh, had oil as part of the uh, reason why the war happened so uh, we can throw that whole system away today literally 40 feet away from where this car sits is the source that generates the fuel to run this car and that's a much better system than the old one under oil so that's one reason why you might want to go solar another reason there are another two issues why you might want to go solar is the economics of it and also the resiliency that comes with going solar. On the economics front, we have uh, 
after a certain amount of time, your solar system will pay back for itself. So you have an initial cost that system is. You can offset that by the value of electricity that you generate by uh, creating your own electricity, by the tax credit that you can take off your taxes on the initial installation, by the SREX that you can sell uh, to a broker to, uh, that needs solar, clean energy, uh, renewable energy credits. And then there's also, if you're a business, you have a tax depreciation. So you add those factors up and that all is uh, a return on investment. And after a certain number of years, those will add up to equal the original installation cost. And that's the payback period. In Pennsylvania, you're looking at a payback period of roughly 12 to 15 years. And then after that 15 years is up, those solar panels will continue generating for another 15 years possibly of free electricity. And so the economics of that really make a lot of sense for someone who plans to stay at their house for a long period of time. The other item that is really important is the resiliency. Uh, we are in a system in this country where more and more the, the power is centralized in a large government and it's also uh, the power is in a, a central utility that has a power plant 20 or 30 miles away generating electricity feeding us here and uh, feeding all the homes in this area. And when you go solar, you have returned the power to the people, to the local community, and they are able to be more resilient. If the power goes out from a storm or from a terrorist attack or a cyber attack, you are able to install batteries uh, to link up with your solar system and disconnect your home from the grid, and you are able to be self-sufficient and uh, use your own power for a period of time until the grid back gets back together again. Both of my sisters lived through Hurricane Sandy when that hit the New York, New Jersey area, and uh, they lost power for 10 days, so they really found out what it's like to do without power. And the thing that they missed the most was being able to charge their cell phones, and especially in a power outage, you're able to, if you have your cell phone with you, you can find out where to get ice, or you can talk to your neighbors or other people about, uh, you know, getting food or whatever you need in, in a crisis, emergency, or some type of power outage. So that's another beauty of solar, the ability to restore power to local communities, to generate your own power, and to be self-sufficient. So those are the last points that I want to make here at the solar tour. Again, this is the 2021 National ASES Solar Tour from Point Breeze. I invite you to come visit us on the tour on October 2 and 3, Saturday and Sunday, from noon to 6. Thanks for stopping by.